Hey guys, hope you are all doing well today. So we have a matchup between the Empire going up against the forces of the Tomb Kings. In previous matchups, I have noticed that Empire does stand a little more favorably in this matchup, though I'm not really sure since I haven't really played against very experienced players. But in this matchup, I will be commanding the forces of the Empire. Let's quickly get into the armies. So for my Empire army, we have a front line of swordsmen with one of the Sigmar sons. And we also have an unbreakable unit of flagellants to back them up as well. Spearmen on either flank and a two units of Empire Knights just for some screening potential. We have double great cannons in this matchup. Great cannons are very, very powerful at sniping out constructs, but due to the unbreakable nature of the Tomb King's mobility, they can basically just sacrifice a couple Nehekar horsemen or carrion to try and shut these guys down for the majority of the battle. We have a Jade Wizard bringing some healing in the form of Earthblood and Regrowth, and we have the great Karl Franz in the skies coming in with Reichland, Runefang, Galmaraz, Stand Your Ground, and Foe Seeker. For the Vanguard deployment, we have a couple skirmishers, one of which are the Outriders with Grenade Launchers. I love this unit. They can do so much damage if you uh, just leave them alone, let them fire in. They can do so much damage, and I think they're quite a bit underrated. I don't really get to see them in matchups pretty often, but I definitely think they should be used a lot more. But in this case, they should be able to do decent work to, to uh, Tomb Guard or even Neckar Warriors or really any of the Tomb King's infantry. We also have double outriders, good for sniping constructs as well, alongside the Great Cannons. And they are also very, very powerful skirmishers. And yeah, that seems to be mostly it for the Empire Army, so let's move on to the Tomb Kings. We have a huge infantry brush in the form of Nehekar warriors who should be able to chew through swordsmen and spears, spearmen. We have a couple Tomb Guard as well who will similarly do a decent job to the front lines of the Empire. And a couple skeleton spearmen and Tomb Guard with halberds to back them up. We have... Necropolis Knights with Halberds on either flank bring some very powerful anti-large potential to this fight. They will definitely be able to take down Karl Franz with relative ease. We have two units of Nehekara Horsemen. And we have Arkin the Black on his chariot, likely bringing Spirit Leeching. Yeah, Spirit Leeching and Fate of Buna. We also have Double Carrion currently heading in to try and stop those Great Cannons from firing. Unfortunately, I forgot to turn on Guard Mode during this battle, so those Carrion will do a very effective job of stopping their firing arcs. Anyways, let's get started with this battle as the Tomb Kings will be pushing forward. They have not brought any range or artillery in this case, so the Great Cannons will be making quick work of them if they decide to stay in the back. And you can see, this is why I think they're so underrated. These grenade launchers almost bring these Nagar warriors down to about half HP, doing a ton of damage before they are forced to retreat due to incoming Nehekar horsemen. Similarly, on the other side, the Nehekar horsemen do manage to catch a couple of these outriders, but they will be retreating behind the front lines of the Empire, and now these carrion have jumped in to those cannons to try and shut them down, but Empire Knights will be stopping them in their tracks. They are unbreakable, so it might take a while for them to fall uh, to fall into the ground, but Empire Knights should make quick work of them. We have Karl Franz diving into some of these Nekar horsemen, and they do decide to retreat. And now the front lines are moving to engage, as these Nekar horsemen unfortunately charge into some spearmen who were braced as well, so... They are really, really going to take a ton of damage. Some Necropolis Knights with Halberds are flanking around. Hopefully you can get some Outrider fire into them. But now we have a pretty large engagement as some Skeleton Warriors who were summoned and Necropolis Knights try to take down this Great Cannon, but they are stopped in the tracks by Empire Knights and Spearmen. Outrider fire is withering and doing quite a bit of damage to these Necropolis Knights. Ark in the Black also decides to go into this blob, but then has to disengage as Karl Franz is on the hunt. 
And now I do manage to turn these Outriders, and they should be doing a decent amount of damage to these Necropolis Knights. And now Ark in the Black once again coming to a, coming for a charge into the em forces of the Empire, but Karl Franz is right there to greet him. And oh man, doing about half HP damage, definitely getting a ton of value. Unfortunately, these Necropolis Knights are now going to be forced to fight on top of Spearmen and take some Outrider Fire, so they will probably not be long for this world. Front lines are holding out for the Empire. They do have some unbreakable units here and there, and the Outriders with grenade launchers are doing a beautiful job of destroying the tightly grouped formations of the Twin Kings. You can see these Skeleton Spearmen getting completely obliterated, and they're shielded as well, so... That just shows the power of these guys. We have some Necropolis Knights still fighting and holding out for a very long time surprisingly. Though they will probably be falling once some support comes in the form of Outrider Fire or Karl Franz himself. And let's see how Karl Franz is doing. He's taken quite a bit of damage but he has Delta in return to these Necropolis Knights. And once those, once those Necropolis Knights go down there isn't too much on the Tomb King roster that can take down the great world beater that is Karl Franz. He is going to be chasing Ark in the Black right now as he gets a side charge into some retreating swordsmen. And now Karl Franz is going to be diving into these Necropolis Knights since they are one of the last remaining big threats on the field. Grenade launchers again launching a ton of their floating bullets into, well I guess they're grenades now that I look at their name launching a ton of their ammunition into these tomb guards and completely wrecking them. They have been vital in this matchup and now they turn and they fire in on this blob. Oh my god, I want to see how many kills they got after this game because that is just crazy. Carl Franz cleaning up a lot of the Necropolis Knights and at this point there's not much on the Tomb King roster that can threaten Carl Franz. Of course there is a Jade Wizard to provide him some healing as well so that just shows how even how more how, how much more power he is with the healing and now the tomb kings are going for a final blob engagement as ushapti ushapti actually could take down karl franz so he might want he might have to be careful in this matchup there are some necropolis knights as well so karl franz this may be a good time for him to disengage some outriders initially were routing but now they are getting some very good fire into Ark in the Black, he really has to watch out, and they should really, the Tomb Kings should really find a way to shut down these Outriders. It's like some grenade launchers, massively overextended, and now are going to be shut down by some Nehekar horsemen, but they have done their job relatively well, though. Oh man, some grenades into this giant blob would have been very, very deadly. Outriders still, I think, I'd say like the the skirmishing core of the Empire has really, be the, has really been the MVPs of this matchup and unfortunately the Tomb Kings really didn't bring any range to try and counter them. Karl Franz does manage to get back in the skies and he has Reichling Runefang pop and now looks like he will be aiming to shut down Ark in the Black. He will be chasing after some of these Outriders but looks like a rear charge from some of these Empire Knights are going to be coming slowing him down so that Karl Franz can clean him up. Now let's watch this. This is probably the engagement that determines the outcome of the battle. Karl Franz getting one hit in. Another hit sitting at 5, 514 HP and he's going to be crumbling into the ground as a skeleton summon does come in too little too late. The Empire Knights are routing and Karl Franz is surrounded by spears, but they really won't be able to take down oh, the Great Emperor. And the rest of the Tomb King army is falling apart. There are still some Nehekar warriors who could chew through a lot of the Empire infantry, but with Karl Franz still alive and still a sizable skirmishing core, the Empire should be able to easily handle this matchup. There are some Necropolis Knights that are crumbling, sitting at around 200 HP, but Outriders should make quick work of them as well. And the Empire Knights are returning, so some cycle charging is in order for the Empire. And this battle is basically over as Sigmar Sons holding out to the last man against these Tomb Guard, both unbreakable units. 
I do believe the Tomb Guard will be winning that matchup, though. The great supporters of Sigmar have done their job in holding out for a very long time. I, I want to see how many kills they got as well. Call Franz is surprisingly low in HP, but honestly, there is nothing left for the Tomb Kings. You can see the balance of power is nearing army losses, and I'm just going to speed the battle up at this point since the outcome is pretty predictable. And the Empire does win the day, so let's check out those kills I was mentioning. 167. Not bad at all. Definitely doing a ton of damage to the relatively elite, well not, well elite for the Tomb Kings. Tomb Guard really aren't super elite in terms of infantry, but they did manage to get some very, very valuable kills. Along with the Sigmar Sons as well, getting a good 80 kills again against pretty valuable infantry in the form of Tomb Guard with Halberts and some other, I'm guessing, Nakar Warriors. Karl Franz, of course, the world beater that he is, probably carried the matchup, killing off Ark in the Black, shutting down a lot of those Necropolis Knights. He is really just a monster in the skies, and Tomb Kings really need some, for some sort of range to try and screen him out and make sure that he never gets too comfortable in a fight. One thing that the Tomb Kings did do a very, very good job of is shutting down these Great Cannons. They got six kills total, though I'm guessing those six kills were on Necropolis Knights, so not the worst kill totals, but they were shut down for majority of the battle, so a very good play from the Tomb King player to get them offline relatively quickly. On the Tomb King side of things, I'd say that their infantry performed relatively well. Again, not having any range just meant that the Skirmishing Corps could completely obliterate their infantry, leaving only some Necropolis Knights and Ark in the Black to really fight, hold out the matchup. And they did somewhat well, I guess, considering they didn't have much support. But I would, in uh, such a battle, bring either Great Bows or just straight up skeleton archers. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this battle. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.